Welcome to Golf Escapes. This week we've come to the beautiful island of Isla just off the west coast of Scotland to visit the Macquarie Hotel in Golf Links. A short hop across from Glasgow Airport, this hotel was reopened in 2018 after a complete restoration. But golf is not what the island is famous for, it's whiskey. So with only 36 hours to explore, first things first, I'm off to meet David Foley, the head professional here at the Macquarie, to find out more about what the golf course has in store. So David, there's been a lot going on here in the last few years. The course originally landed in 1891 and then it's had a redesign more recently, hasn't it? Correct, yeah. So the initial course in 1891 was designed by a man called Willie Campbell. Uh, back in 1901, the biggest monetary match of all time took place here on the Macri, um, for £100. So the place is absolutely steeped in history. But it went into receivership in 2012. Gavin and Sue then bought it and it was redesigned by DJ Russell. For visitors coming to the course that haven't been here before, what sort of style can they expect? The old golf course here, the old Macri, would have been 17 fairly blind holes, completely blind holes, tee shots and second shots. So it's all been opened up, redesigned, so it has all been moved and extended out. The fall-offs and run-offs and contours around the greens here are basically world-class and second to none. I've been around the world and they're as good as you'll see anywhere. DJ has really redesigned a, an absolute classic here. Like um, We discussed, as you know, about a rating this year, yeah. which is the top 100 UK and Ireland, and a nice feather in the hat for Gavin, Sue, DJ, and all the work that's gone involved. Now we've come in at 47th, which is great for the first year, so Absolutely. brilliant. So onwards and upwards. And we know how important the wind is in Lynx Golf. You can feel we've probably not got it too bad today, but it's picking up. And with this par three, 205 yards, I think we had it. It's quite a challenge, so should we crack on? We will. <laughs> Best of luck. <laughs> So David, I'm doing my best to follow you around the course. We find another fairway here, which is good news. What a spectacular hole this is, the fifth. Yeah, the fifth here is uh, an extremely demanding hole. I was kind of talking on the tee box saying how tight it is back there. Yeah. Um, almost a semi-blind kind of tee shot that funnels down and pinches in. And it pinches in at 265 yards and then drops significant amount down below. So I mean, <laughs> if you if you do want a challenge, I mean, take something that's longer than 264. To catch the drop. To catch the drop down, you'll gain another 40 yards. That pin is tucked tight left, which is a very demanding shot, and those hills that are short as well. So it either demands that you run it in with a low draw, or you go extremely high. Yeah. Hopefully it holds. But you know, a typical thing of the redesign as well. I mean, it gives you so many options, so many variations. The pin positions is just... You could play this place 365 days of the year, and it won't play the same, which is, <laughs> which is the fun thing. So, Sign of brilliant. a good course, yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah. And the dunes are just wonderful. Hmm. So let's see if we can find the green, shall we? Yeah. So David, you were telling me about what you're up to, getting youngsters into the game and enthused about playing golf. Tell me more, what's the, what's the trick? Yeah, it's brilliant here because we've arrived over with a clean slate. Um, pretty much no juniors over the next 24, 36 months to develop juniors from the island here. Locals, obviously, we want to see. There's 440 in the schooling. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see 10 to 15% of those active within 24 months, maybe. So we've kind of gone out to the soccer clubs um, got them in for an introduction to golf and we've had 10 to 15 junior members sign up with us. The owners are backing it, they, all the members here are backing it, everybody's positive. Something I would like to add there, I mean, it's £10 to join for a junior, so it's a nominal fee, it's just to get them in for, for nothing. So David, walking onto the 16th here, I mean, what do you think? It's probably 40, 40 yards from front to back? 45, yeah. 45. And this is kind of typical of a lot of the designs on the course we talked about in the greens that you have all these fall offs and run offs. Um, today, obviously, we're into the wind and you'll see we have a front pin. But you could hit a seriously good shot in there and miss by a yard. A yard? Yeah. It's feeding down maybe six foot below the green. The great design by DJ here is that on all the greens you have split into areas, shoulders, contours. 
And if you hit a really good shot into a, a tight pin, you get well rewarded. Yeah. But if you're not in that little section, you can be struggling for a two foot and maybe a three or four foot sometimes. <laughs> but... I've hit mine way back there, but I mean, you've got such a steep slope there. If you get that within 15 feet, you'll be doing well. <sighs> See what I've got. That is really good. Excellent. Got to slow down. Excellent. Slow down. Very good. It's going to be borderline there, I think, David. Super. <laughs> I think that's cost me a, a bottle of whiskey, I think. Firm and right edge. Hopefully my last putt. Excellent. Well Snuck done. in there. Well, David, thank you very much for that round of golf. I thoroughly enjoyed myself. I had a pleasure, all mine. I couldn't keep up with your play today, some excellent shots, and I can see why any avid golfer needs to come here to the Macquarie to have a round. Absolutely fantastic day, and please visit us soon again at the Macquarie Links. To thank the you. bar. Cheers. Thanks, Anna. <laughs> thank you. Well, it's fair to say after that round of golf with David, I am in need of some recuperation. And thankfully here at the Macquarie, you can do just that with two treatment rooms and the sauna. You can come inside to relax after a tough day on the links. Well, after a great night's sleep, I'm feeling refreshed and ready to explore the island of Isla, the Queen of the Hebrides. And of course, you can't come here without visiting the world-famous whiskey tour. And there's also 130 miles of coastline to see. Sadly, I can't fit them all in today, but I've heard that Macher Bay is not to be missed. Brookladdy Distillery is nestled right on the coast on the west side of the island and it's one of nine working distilleries here on Isla. I've come down to have a chat with Robert McEachern to find out more about its history and how it has evolved since the 19th century. Robert, Brookladdy has been here since the 19th century. Can you tell me more about the history and how you've survived those ups and downs that you've been telling me about? Yeah, I mean, it's a uh, Victorian era distillery. It was built in 1881 uh, by three brothers from Glasgow who were from a distilling family. So they came over and wanted to build a distillery on Isla. Fortunately for us, everything they put in at that time is still here now, essentially. Um, so we're still using all the equipment that, that was put in in 1881. The company's changed hands um, multiple times since 1881 and in 2012 uh, Remy uh, Quantrill came in and, and bought the company. And you now have a gin that you distill here as yeah. well, can you tell me a little bit more about that? So yeah, the botanist gin we've been making now since 2010, it was the brainchild of, uh, of Jim McEwen, our former master distiller. As a gin fan, he decided he was going to give it a shot. Thankfully for us, we'd picked up an old uh, Lowman still. <laughs> Which, uh, which we got from a, a, an old distillery in, in Glasgow called Bumbarton Distillery. But they decided to make some changes to it, and uh, the first time they did it, they cracked a good recipe working with two local botanists. Well, I'm hoping I could try some of the gin and some of the whiskey, but before that, it'd be good to see more about the process and how you actually make it. So, can we go on a little bit of a tour? Yeah, sounds good. Brilliant. This machine, has this been here since the very beginning? Yeah, well, I mean, as far as we can tell from records, it's been there right since the early days. It's one of the last in Scotland with it that's belt driven. Um, amazing piece of Victorian machinery, and we have to look after it really well because it's uh, it, it can it can trip us up if we don't if we don't look after it. So, Robert, where do you get your barley from? So, at the moment, 48% of the barley we use we grow on Isla, uh, and the other 52% uh, is in Scottish mainland. So, we only use 100% uh, Scottish barley. And are these the three main whiskies that you distill here? Yeah, Brick Laddie, which is unpeated, Port Charlotte, which is heavily peated, and Octomore, which is super heavily peated. Great. So, a real variety of flavour. Yeah, absolutely. Can't wait to try them. Yeah. <laughs> mm. 
So step two, Robert, what on earth is going on here? The original mash tun, again, it was brought in in 1881. We're essentially taking that grist from the mill house, we add it into the mash tun with the hot water, and essentially what we're doing is converting the starches in the, in the grist into sugar, and drawing that sugar off into a really syrupy, sugary liquid called wort, and that's what we'll take the next process. This is where all the fermentation process takes. So we've got six amazing Oregon pine uh, washbacks, um, some of which date back to probably around about the 70s, like this one here, number three. This one's working pretty hard at the moment, so it's quite a nice sight to see. Let's have a look. We'll get a little look at it. Whoa. So you can see it fizzing oh, really hard in there. Really that's really fizzing, that, isn't that's it? That's that fermentation process, just working really, really hard. It's like a bath. <laughs> yes, is, aye. There's about 35,000 litres of liquid in there at the moment. What happens if you had a leak? You'd have a serious problem. <laughs> we'd, we'd have to go around and drink it all as it leaked out. <laughs> Well, Robert, it's been amazing to hear about this technique that's been passed down through the generations, and I'd love to try some. <laughs> sure we can manage that. <laughs>So Robert, this is where it all ends up in the warehouse full of these barrels which smell amazing and you've got the three whiskies that you distill here. Yeah, so we've got a cask of Brickladdy, a cask of Port Charlotte and a cask of Octomore. Everything that we make is matured in Isla, uh, distilled, matured and bottled here. So we're very proud of that. And uh, we've got one of the first barrels ever, ever filled by the new owners of the distillery back in 2001 of Brickladdy. So we can maybe get a little try of that, that if you want. That would be great, I'm up for that, definitely. Cool. Wow, look at the colour of that. It looks absolutely amazing. Robert, thank you so much for showing us around today. No problem. It's been fascinating to see the process from the grain to the glass, and I can see why this has got to be a stop if any visitor is coming to the island of Isla. Slange. Slange. Well, I've only a couple of hours left before my flight back to Glasgow. Just enough time to play the wee course here at the Macri. Six perfectly manicured holes, playable in four different loops. So let me be clear, this is not a pitch and putt. These holes are a tough test of golf, ranging from 80 to 220 yards, and I'm ready to give it a crack. <laughs> Come to the end of my stay here on Isla and what a trip it has been. The warmth and hospitality of these locals, world-class golf, stunning coastline and whiskey. This is a golf experience not to be missed.